Alright everyone, this is charlie 6 Zulu once again with another battle replay. We have one from, I believe it was... Two weeks ago? Uh, from the date this came out? Maybe three? Ooh, I don't know. Uh, the Waga from one of Joe on its live streams, I know. I get so many from there. But, they are a great close matchup game that you can that we get. Uh... If you do have any videos you want to send, uh, there is a link, or there is an email in the description. Just send your replays to that. If you do have any questions on how to send it, put it in the comments, and I'll be able to help. Now, with uh, this video, I do hope you do like and subscribe. We are so close to 100, which would be great to get before midsummer. <laughs> uh, but... We should get started. Now, this is when Joe was getting $50, uh, <laughs> basically $50 uh, donations to have to play Rome, which he really loved. It's his favorite faction by far, and he has to force himself to spend $50 to be able to play it. But this is a 4v4 on Ildon. The town center is right here, in this little spot right here. But we should... Probably start with the attackers. You might notice something interesting in the corner, but that is not important. That is just a mirage, a figment of your imagination. Uh, we have, of course, let's start with Mr. Onnit with his favorite faction, Rome. He has one General's Bodyguard, one Fixed Ballista, three Syrian Archers, three Armored Legionnaires, which I think are hiding. Are these the evil Cadi? Oh, these are evil Cadi. Ooh. Oh, well, I kind of I've kind of uh spoiled you. He's four evil Cadi cohort, which oh gosh, that is that itself is not fun. Uh, but he also has five Hastadi and one veteran legionnaire. Let's see if we can see his random veteran legionnaire. I don't know if we can. No, those are Hayden. We can see his evil Cadi, which are scary, scary units. Well, hold on, here's the veteran legionnaire. God, he's mixing them up. Evil Cadi and evil Cadi. Uh, next up, we have... Uh, he's a little spread out, but we'll go with S Smart Hawk. He's Saba. Now, he's got a royal... Uh, Marib Cavalry General, and a Camel Lancer that we do not see. Interesting, interesting. Most We actually can't see most of his army uh, hiding it in one of the forests, most likely. But he also has a Fixed Ballista. Uh, he has three Sabaean Archers. Additional Marib Royal Guard. Uh, or an, or an, I say additional. It's a nice Spearman unit. It is very nice. And a very dangerous unit. Six mascot, mercenary mascot marauders. Wish I could see the Marib Royal Guard because they're my favorite. But I do like these boys too. Medium axe infantry. They are very scary. Uh, but he also has seven Sabean swords. Which... I like how the mercenary mascots are visible. But <laughs> Sabean swords are not. Uh... <laughs> Priorities. Swaby is next, and we have this one being played by Mr. Dairy Farmer. He is a very dangerous player, and he's got a very dangerous army, starting us off with five Swordmasters, including his general, <laughs> which is just going to tear through us. Uh, on top of that, he's got four Longbow Hunters, which are hiding around somewhere with their nice little stock. Five Bloodsworn. Those guys right here. These are what I'd like to bring. Everyone says Club Lovey, but I like the Bloodsworn a little more. Uh, they have a 10 bonus versus infantry, but that 38 melee attack. I believe they have... Uh, yeah, I mean, a significantly better charge bonus. I don't know if Club Lovey have more armor. Uh, but that's not important. Next up, as you might guess, uh, is the Club Lovey, and of course, rounding out his army, the Woden As Spear. Now, they don't seem scary because they're not super expensive, but they are terrifying in their own right. They are a very tanky unit, 
They come with, of course, Calvary Counter Tactics, Expert Charge Defense, Encourage, which is really nice for them to have, like bring one or two in your army, even if they don't do anything crazy, that one or two should be able to help you. Next up, we have Seleucid, who is going to have a completely normal day. Nothing's happening over here, so just ignore that. Uh, but that this is shall not pass, and well, as you might guess from his title, he shall not pass. Uh, he's got a Silver Shield General Swordsman, very scary unit, very elite unit. Honestly, I prefer these boys over the Royal Peltists, uh, which they can get as well. But I, more than anything else, prefer a Cavalry General. <laughs> uh, one Fixed Ballista, so that makes the total of three Fixed Ballistas, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, everyone but Swaby brought one. Uh, four Syrian Archers. Uh, is it four Syrian Archers? Yeah, four Syrian Heavy Archers. Two Eastern Spearmen. Don't normally see them too often. They're a little low-tier unit with their little onion hats. <laughs> Seven Thorax Swords, and of course, four Thoreos Spears. Now, he is on the edge, prepared for something. Thoreos Spears on the right-hand flank to just defend himself. But, I mean, he's completely fine. There's nothing going to happen to him. He's going to just have a normal attack. Now, the defenders are bringing a completely standard defense. Uh, first off with, let's start with Kush and Rise of Germania. Now, he's got a Royal Kushite Archer General along with two archers. I know. Fancy units. He also has, let's see if I can see it. Where are you? Is he hiding with the rest of us? Yes, he is. He's got a desert chariot over here. Ah, uh, just do want to give a pause for this shit show. <laughs> Everything coming out of one little gate, including my shirtless boys. But on top of that, he also has... Uh, a unit of Armored Desert Cavalry. Fun stuff. Uh, he also has one Armored Shotel. Along with five regular Shotel Warriors. So only one of the Armored Variation. He has a, di a Disciple of a Pinmac, uh, Line Boys. Roar, as their title says. And a Kushite Pike as well. And to round out his army... The unit that Kush is more famous for than even the Shotels and Armored Shotels is Kushite Slave Infantry. Very dangerous low tier because they have Pila. <laughs> Only reason. Uh, next up, let's go with, I think, Codename Double O, Colchis. Has two Noble Blood Cavalry, including his general. Uh, are they in the cluster? Yes, they are in the cluster, leading the charge. Followed by another unit. Uh, that's definitely not coming out. That's not important. He's got four Eastern Archers. One Axeman. One Kokian Noble, which is the best-looking unit. So I'm going to find that and zoom in on that. There he is. Look at those sexy boys. I love the Kokin Nobles. They all have the uh, wings of Nike on their helmet, which is really nice. Uh, on top of that, he has three Hillmen and, of course, seven Cartley Axemen, which you should never underestimate. These Axemen are actually very good units. Look at them. Good stats, good armor. Can actually pack a hell of a punch, especially against fellow armored boys. Let's bring ourselves to Lusitani. Lusitani is being played by Riza for 6911. He is he's got two Lusitani nobles, including that general. Look at those boys. He's also got a scorpion. Which right here on the edge could be dangerous, especially if they start coming down this way. Or if he angles it towards here and they start coming down this pathway. Um I actually normally, when I play here, play Desert Faction and put a Ballista, or Eastern Onager here, because you can do that with Eastern Factions. But on top of that, he's got four Iberian Slingers. 
six Lusitani Swordsmen, and, well, we can't deny our eyes any longer. He's got s seven Gorilla Swordsmen. All getting ready to charge. The final army is the best army, uh, the army that is going to definitely contribute to most of the fight, and definitely didn't make it far more difficult on his teammates, is Iceni, played by yours truly. He's got a heroic rider, general, four Britain scout riders, little cheap shirtless boys with javelins. Uh, he's got four chariots, because <laughs> why not, and six ambushers. So, uh, this is going to start off really fast, uh, and I think I'm going to have to prepare for that real fucking, <laughs> real fast. So, I'll see you when the battle starts. No, look at that, the first javelin volleys. And here comes the panic, to be honest. <laughs> Yep, here's the panic. <laughs> They're like, oh shit. Oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. Well, over here, we got some units. Now, there is a is little issue, is they're already undiscovered. Now, this is a big problem for us, because we were hoping they would stay hidden for a little longer. Uh, because now they know they're coming. Instead of just an initial push out, which we're already beating up the Thraeo Spears, Eastern Spearmen... I'm getting to Thorax. But the reason why is there's a Sabine Royal Cavalry. Ca little Sabine General over here. That we've discovered. And a Camel Lancer. Now this makes it very dangerous. Because we were hoping for the benefit of surprise for a little longer as our lines are starting to break through we're starting to break through do some real damage to these guys so I go to chase we go to chase them off we decide it's not worth it they're gonna be able to outrun us so we need to just focus our attack on beating up these boys And Singer starting to get more and more in. Thorax swords starting to lose their numbers over here. These Thorax are losing. These ambushers are losing. These are winning. Over here, it's not going as well for uh, Lusitani. They ended up getting swarmed a little too hard. Or they ended up getting blobbed a little too hard. So it is just becoming a brutal blob fest. But with this Gorilla Warrior most likely coming around and hitting them from behind, this could turn it around in their favor. Is Thorax losing, getting another Javelin Volley. As I'm trying to keep these guys hidden as I'm marching them across the side, hoping to sneak attack other ones, but it's not going to work out. The uh, Syrian Heavy Archers, which were our hope to get, uh, are going to get out of there, so we have to content ourselves with killing the infantry. Now, over here, all that's happening is they are busting down this wall. That's their aim. A lot of the Lusitani boys did surround them. But, now the chariots are starting to get in. Getting ready to start doing their damage. Two hundred and fifteen kills on this ambusher. Nice. Twenty-three. Rogue Riders, some Chariots. As the Burden Scout Riders start hammering flanks, Chariots are starting to march through. Horde of Chariots. Right through these guys, right in the back. Starting to go back. Through here, here. Yeah. 
numbers starting to drop, but these ambushers getting back in, holding that silver shield up, so we can get into them. This one going red, already at 137 kills, with this one at a 108. Hopefully we can do a bit more damage. This one getting in pretty well. There we go. Well, this one following suit. No kills yet, but they're going to start racking up those kills. As Kush and some of Colchis try to move further to the right, trying to flank that uh, Sway B Force, which I don't think is going to go too well for them. That chariot unit is down at 211. Rome is starting to move up, uh, as he knows he has very little threat, but he is getting a line to defend his push up. Kulk is trying to be a little sneaky. This Silver Shield Swordman's rounded down to 81, 80 men, but they have gotten a lot of kills. More and more, these thorax start to drop. Swaby is going to be left with very little left, to be honest. And that uh, that Greek giant ballista is down to 16 men. He does have his little cluster here. He's lucky that he had so many uh, siege towers there to cluster. But out here on the walls, I mean Histadi taking on Kushite slaves. They are winning because they're being shot. <laughs> Guy to see the arrow shots. On the flank, some Cartleys are taking on his Stadi, which should be actually a pretty good fight for them. Yeah. The issue is, is those Stadi are actually in that tower range. I have two little scout riders over here. We got a Kushite chariot over here. Armored Desert cha Cherry trying to t thread the needle and get to those ballistas. Never mind, he's going for the general. But he's not going to survive very long. But we'll s check back and see if we can... Because Kush is coming in. But this is not going to go really well for them. They might want to try to take out that longbow hunter, but there we go. Nope, 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 nope. Recut, recut. You're going to miss the... Yeah, they're going to die. They're going to die there, here. We're trying to surround what remains of the thorax swords, beating them up. Most of the remaining boys are dead. We did manage to kill off the general. That chariot ended up doing very little. Nothing. And with those Marib coming back, we're just trying to finish off what's left of Seleucid as Rome pushes in. Rome ended up winning. Kushite Slave Infantry, they're just going to get shot in the back. They're also taking on Evo Kadi. Hartleys are winning. Veteran Legionnaires in the fight are even. But the Stadi are easily losing. Now I try to make uh, I try to go to bait him, see if I can scare away some of those longbow hunters, and I try to turn around, but I do turn around just a little too late, and I lose half my number. <laughs> yeah, yeah, really bad. This we're managing to break pretty much. Slukid is pretty much out of the fight, outside of his archers, but they have gotten some pretty good kills. They've done a lot more damage than we were hoping they would do. And that is very attributed to the fact that they discovered us so early because of those Marib. We're going to try to pull out of there with what we've got, which for me is a Heroic Rider with 239. Burden Scout Rider, Burden Scout Rider, 
the Verdant Scout Rider, and a single unit of chariots. That's all I've got left. Lusitani's got three units of Gorilla Swords. Now, unlike me, Lusitani at least has some boys in the wall, including a bunch of Iberians, which are about to get caught out of position. What you should do is try to engage one and have the rest fire volleys in, because these guys each have five volleys. But he's not... He wasn't paying much attention, and he's letting and he got himself engaged pretty badly. Over here is going better for us. Uh, Cartleys are doing their work; they're cutting through, beating the veteran legionnaires. Just cycle charging around because he just has to worry about one corridor. However, it's going to become a lot harder for him as Swaby begins to move up. Now, attacking this side is a very weird way to do it. Most people don't, mainly because. This flank right over here can't have any people on it. Uh, you can shoot around, but you can't actually put people on it. Which is why people prefer attacking on this side. But everyone's like, hey, we're gonna do something different. When they saw the armies, Lusitani and Iceni, they went, we're gonna have the advantage in ranged. Ooh, these camel lancers just actually doing work. Look at that. Camel Shock Cav. Breaking two units, and they're probably going to route them permanently off the field while I run away. But as more and more boys get in... I, In my opinion, he's not using the Iberians effectively. The Iberians are effective as try to use as many javelins as he can. Even if he can't control them, you still have five of them. Looks like a bit of a push through is happening, but it does look like it gets stopped. And this is going to go really bad for the Iberians. So this is the other big mistake. We lost a lot of Iberians right here. A lot more men than we were hoping. Kind of see they're starting to drop. Forcing us to engage a little bit. Forcing us to use a bit of ammo just to try to keep some of these guys alive. Uh... So, us getting discovered so early and losing a lot of men here. I mean, I, I, I have all my scout riders except for one, my heroic, but I've lost three chariots and seven ambushers. Well, Lusitani lost seven gorilla swordsmen. Uh, we also lost an, a desert chariot, which didn't do anything, and an armored desert cavalry, which did very little. And basically, at this point, we're trying to fight an uphill battle. Real difficult. Because now Swaby's got his archers on the side. Meaning, now that the Hestadi have turned their back there, the Cartley, which we're slaughtering, by the way, are now going to drop. There's, We are going to be unable to hold this point anymore. As watch, they're about to restart their fire. Yep, they're already starting to shoot. Look at that. Hardly dropping right now. Oh. That's over. And this is what very often happens when you have... The enemy has archer supremacy. They can do this. We can't hold that corner anymore, so we're forced to fall back. They're taking us out of the middle, so we won't be able to defend here anymore. You can see the showtails trying to get back, but they're going to get just surrounded. And this is going to become very dangerous for us, and we're going to get shattered here in this corner. Which, in all intents and purposes, should be to our favor. I mean, they can't surround us. They can only go this way, literally right down here. Small little corridor. And yet, you can see how badly we're being pushed back. And that is due to two big mistakes. Our ambush not going very well. And... Or, our ambush going well, it ended up really as a draw. We lost, in the total, about an army. Uh, they lost an army. With an ambush, you kind of want to push better. So if we lost an army, we kind of want to take out an army and a half to two armies.
And the other issue that happens is that with the Iberian Swordsman. We lost way too many Iberian Swordsmen in what would be a pointless fight, one that we could have done far better, traded far better in. Since we traded so poorly, we're now in a very bad situation. I think I'm shooting. Yeah, getting 94 kills. Here I am, hitting right there. <laughs> yeah, they clumped up, so I just decided to sh turn the artillery and fire. The issue is, as you can kind of see how we're holding, is not, not ideal at all. We need to get out of this corner and probably push back to here. So we can get the shots this way and force them to engage on here. And probably about, quite possibly, just hold this area right here. To prevent any real side shots. They would have to push their archers pretty far out. Which we still have cavalry that could capitu or capitalize on that. Is this battle over? In many cases, yes. Uh, it can still be won. How it can still be won is very good plays with the slingers. Very good plays with the elites. So the Armored Chotel, the Pike, the Lusitani Nobles, and the Disciples. Is it likely we're going to win at this point? No. There is a reason for this. I, I performed this battle, and that is one very simple thing. We... That's not good at all. Chotel's dropping against Evocati. Evocati pushing here and winning. Ugh. What are, yes, you can see, look at that. They're just longbow hunters hiding here and just firing sideways. Yeah, we see we can't even engage here. We have to push back to, in my opinion, about here. But I'm pretty much out of the fight trying to do something sneaky on my own. Try to snipe those camel lancers. But... The reason I show this battle is this normally is how a ambush goes if it gets caught early on. As one might expect, an ambush sally out takes advantage of confusion, takes advantage of just taking them off guard and blitzing them. They had ample time to hit our to know about our second wave. Look at those slingers go. So I, they might actually let the Iwokati win, but. Those camel launchers have so many kills. But to be perfectly honest, this fight had a few mistakes in it, and I wanted to show that off. On my own expense, I guess you could say. And I'll explain more about it later. Let's just enjoy a bit of the fight for now. Longpo Hunter shoot into the flank of these Cartley. Ooh, and these hillmen now, and just eviscerate them. Swaby moving up. Bloodsworn and Bloodsworn. Bloodsworn. Looks like a Stadi still existing moving in. And me. Trying to rotate this way. Now what I would do with Iceni is pull back. There's like no infantry here. Pull those slingers out. I would get that Shotel out. Because once that breaks through, that's surrounded. And Colchis is starting to hold the way I think he should. Here. Though he still has a few men up here. And actually hold all the way back here, and that would be a pretty good spot. Less spots needed. Are my Britain Scout Riders trying to do a little bit of work. Getting into those Sabian archers. Same with my heroic riders, just surrounding them. And breaking them. 
There's the rest of Saba trying to get out of there. Scout Riders and my chariots. But yeah, those Evocati starting to tear through even better. Even with just 28 men. These Syrians out? Yeah, these Syrians are out. And see, I'm starting to tie them up so I can kind of rotate around and get as many kills as I can. My general being sneaky. Pretty much the end of my army here. Chariot's going. I'm trying to just bait them with my heroic rider, but that all goes. And then it is the end of Moa. Well, Archer's gone. He's forced to put another Shotel in this corner. Let's hold them back here. It's just one Carly and a Hillman. Well, I mean, they're ripping through the Bloodsworn. The Bloodsworn have 20 armor. It's not a bad thing, but... I mean, you still got... One, two, three, four. I think he still has all five Swordmasters. So Joe, uh, Joe actually came in and was very aggressive with his uh, Evocati cohort. Used to see Vokati Cohort pretty early on to just punch. And punch he did. He's got Armored Legionnaires left. Yeah, Armored Legionnaires are his top units now. And that works for him, because he did that initially. And my chariots are back alive. Woo! Charge in. Final charge of the Light Brigade. And this is the end for him. I've just committed my men until last charge to get a few kills, try to hurt and disrupt them. <sighs> Look at this. This is the final, I think this is, to be honest, the final nail in the coffin. His slingers are really out of position. And you can already see it. Royal Marib Cavalry coming to take advantage of that. My general's still alive. Woo. Don't think he's actually alive at this point. His unit is. You have general recently died. But, here we go. We all want to see. The unit of Iberian Swordsman tries to stop them. At least one Slinger drops. Bad volley. There you go. There's the volley. Runs away. And the Slingers do get out. That is lucky for us, but now this Iberian Sword is now chasing too far. And this could get very dangerous very fast. Luckily, we have Armor Chotel. Now what this Iberian Scorpion should do is aim that way and start firing the shit out of all those advancing units. Oh, just rip them apart. They are a melee cab, but they did get through. Because even then, they could have got through this way. So now what needs to be done is the Colkeen Nobles need to turn around and hold that gap. They don't. They go into Hoplite Wall. And the Marib are allowed to get around. Sorry, not sorry that I I yelled at you. Codename. Genuinely, I'm not. 
So now we have a Merib rolling around that we could have stopped right there and then surrounded and eliminated. And that's what I start to mean by, like, we have to be very careful to win at this point. Because we do have this inner, almost like an inner raised keep. But all of our units need to perform now. Scorpion has to start pushing in some damage. And what happens instead of coming to hold, the Cartleys are pushing back, which, in my opinion, is a mistake. You need to hold here and hold here so you can give the Scorpion more time to fire. The Scorpion needs to, needs to unload his ammo. These Slingers need to get back. Because, <laughs> uh, well, some Rib are about to come out to play. And they're about to get sandwiched. Look, they're trying to run. They run right into some Marib cavalry. Just going to stop a bunch of them off. And, yep, look at that. And they're stopping. And now the armored can continue to come in. Tear into these boys. Luckily, Archer Fire comes to help us. But to be honest, at this point, with Car the Cartleys or Colchis pulling back, it is over. There is no chance of success. We have too many units for the Inner Keep. Too many vulnerable units for the Inner Keep, I should say. If this was all infantry, it'd be a different story. But now this unit, well, there's nothing to challenge them. There's no archers that can move up here and challenge these Syrians' lights. So this Scorpion's going to die. Scorpion can't do anything. And not going to even and out. Slingers are going to have to get back and put more vulnerable infantry here. Because the thing is, is you actually can hold a bit better. with Because you can hold with two units here. Hold with a unit here, three units, and let the scorpion fire. And then have defenses here and here. And then the cartley come out to engage. Because, you know... Good decisions always. Because if Sway be smart, he'll turn around. And now this Cartley's dead. Yeah, this fight is over. Scorpion's dead now. Five kills. Pity. Uh, and there's still one, two, three... I see at least three sword masters left. One, two. And then the general. Four sword masters left. Possibly even all five. Luckily, the cart really are holding out, but they are just out of position and they're just going to get ripped apart by low tiers. Because that's what these are. These are club levy, blood sworn, far cheaper than the cartley. Club Levy's going to go around. They're going to get shot, which is what's basically been winning us the fight, but they're going to keep coming around, killing this Cartley. There it goes. The archer's able just to fire into this circle. Right into the inner keep where all the archers have to kind of push themselves into. Yeah. But let's just enjoy a bit of mayhem.
As funnily enough, the Lusitani nobles <laughs> pull a major last-ditch play and try to strike at these armored legionnaires. Okoka is holding a ton of units in the back with Lusitani here. They're holding at least one, two, three units where the main engagement's going on over here. It's over at this point, but gaps are being formed and it's going to end far faster if this is going on. We want to just, to be honest, at this point, we just want to get as many kills as possible. Let the ranged actually do something so they're not wasted. And I'm sitting back and uh, <laughs> just relaxing. I've had nothing to do for like 20 minutes at this point. <laughs> yep, there's that gap I was talking about. Breaking through right into all the weak boys. Out of ammo slingers. Sword masters just coming in. Disciples being forced into a bad engagement. One where they're just going to get shot. How's over here doing? No, the nobles are coming in. Right into Moscots. Everything for the general getting popped. This might as well at this point, right? We'll see how well he does in the end. Yep, look at that. What I said, disciples are just going to get ripped to pieces by arrows. Rome pushing in this way. Chotel's being forced into the corner. Noble's getting surrounded. As the pikes come in now, the next unit to get shot. Already starting to find their targets. Estadi moving to the left, trying to get around. Realize they don't really have much of an engagement and try to break through these showtels. Which are charging now, creating a bigger gap. And these Kushai pikes are just going to drop. Let's look back over here. How is he doing? 66 kills. Some arrow fire coming in. Yep, next engagement. Swordmaster's pushing up. Swordmaster's getting ready to do their damage. Longbow Hunter's over here. I think these are Syrians on this side. Both from Seleucid and by that. That's what I mean by we were hoping we could take out the Seleucid. If we could take out the Seleucid, it might have been a closer game. Because these are the archers that are firing now. Not The Romans were early on. Longbows are pretty much out now. They're running low at this point. Oh, they got two left, I should say. I think the other two yeah, are getting close to done, if not done. But if we had four less archers to deal with, it would have been a lot closer. The Roman general. Look at him go. Sneaking around. As he pops his second wind. It's right into these uh, eastern archers. Half strength. But over here, Swordmasters are starting to rack up kills. Starting to get kills as all the Swordmasters come in. There's three Swordmasters, including the General. That one's pretty injured. Yep. This is pretty much the end. This is army losses. There'll be a few holdouts for the next minute. But, look at that, General's bodyguard. Let's see if he gets 100. Yeah, he just got 100 kills. 
Ugh, and he's lost two men since he had, like, none. I think he had, like, 20. How's this one looking? 257. And really, the loss to the defense comes into three main parts. One is the ambush got detected too early, and we weren't able to eliminate them in time. Uh, two... Uh, we have... Might as well just zoom in on this fight. Two, we have the loss of a decent amount of men from Lusitani that shouldn't have happened pretty early on into the assault, leading to Rome getting a better position than they should have early on. If that engagement was done properly, uh, they would have lost a decent amount of Fastadi there. And even maybe even an Evocati. But instead they managed to take that corner with almost no fighting. Fucking Roman general getting in again. Look at him go. Actually breaking them. And the third loss was we pushed too far back. Wait with too many soft targets, and their archer supremacy ended up just killing our ranged, which could have done a lot more work. But enough griping. I feel like it's just been an insult to my me and my team the entire time. We might as well take a look. At the battle. And the reason I want to. The final. Again. reason I want to show it is. Ambushes go wrong. Ambushes go wrong a lot of the time. And that's normally what you get. When you have a pretty large sally out like that. You roll the dice. And if they get detected too fast. Well you're in trouble. <laughs> but it was still a good fight anyways. Uh, put in a pretty decent effort. And got a decent amount of them killed. Uh, the only one with really any left were Saba and Swaby. Everyone else was pretty much dead. Now, we should start this. We have uh, Rise as Kush. Let's see if we get anything real stand out. That's really disappointing. That hurt us a lot. That Desert Cherry could have done a lot of work. 231 for the Armored Showtel. 145, 117, and 130 for the regular show tells. 91 for a Kushite Slave. That's actually really good. The other one, not so much. <laughs> Next, we have Riza. Riza had 977 kills. Both Lusitani Nobles, 127, 104. That Scorpion just got obliterated. One of his Gorilla Swords getting 129. This is what I meant with the... Uh, Iberian Swords. They got put into a bad engagement. One of them getting 60, though. That's not bad for a 350 unit. Codename Double O is next. Uh, Koki and Noble getting 180. 130 for one of his Eastern Archers. His Cartleys, 151, 150, 157. That's about it for him. Then my army, uh, my general getting 369, one burn scout rider getting 134, I really didn't expect much from them, so that was really nice. Chariots 211, 122, 212, and 282. I mean, they did good, didn't do as well as I needed them to. Uh, but the ambushers actually did very well, in my opinion. 223, 218, 273. Those three there did far more than I was expecting. And with the, I mean, the other, two of the other three getting in the 90s, it was a very good showing for the ambushers. Decent showing for the chariots, and not much, and amazing showing for the general. And actually a pretty good showing for a lot of these guys. Because I was expecting them just to hold them in position. <laughs> but next we have the attackers. Joe on it, with his favorite faction. Managing to get 155 with that general's bodyguard, general and bodyguard. 196, 176, 184 for his auxiliary Syrians. Armored Legionnaires, 116, 143, 136. If I have to announce this whole army, I swear. Evocati, 100, even. 156, 297. There we go. I don't have to announce the rest of his army. <laughs> Saba here, uh, being laid by that smart hawk boy. Uh, 142 on his general. 237 on those camel launchers. They did really good for cheap shock app. 
His Marie Beauregard didn't even see combat. Really? <laughs> 114 for that mercenary mascot, 102 for that one, and that one's still healthy. I mean, Sabine Swordsman with 109. Deary, look at how healthy these are. Like, seriously. 264 for that one, Swordmaster, still a half strength. 137, 255, 149, and 188 for those Bloodsworn. I mean, that fucked us real hard. <laughs> 142 for that club lovey 143 for that longbow hunter then shall not pass let's look at three of and remember this is the guy who was sallied out on pretty much out of most of his units outside of his archer until the uh by by the beginning of the battle so 304 on his general really good job i mean silver shields silver shield are scary Syrian Heavy Archers, 161, and 229 there. Thorax, 196, 164, 155, 107, 218, 158, 150. I literally had to announce every Thorax, because they all did well. Uh, yeah, Gorillas and Ambushers versus Thorax aren't going to win. That's why we needed the ambu or the Chariots not to be caught so early. <laughs> uh... Nothing for those Thoreos. Well, it was a good fight. I bitched a lot. I hope you don't find that too off-putting. Uh, <laughs> but I promised a fight where there's a moment in the battle that loses it. And there were three such moments where we had momentum to turn it around, and we've lo we lost on all of them. Literally, I don't. we didn't do a single thing well enough. We got caught early on. The yeah, Iberians got hit hard, basically taking Riza out of the fight. A lot of these boys taking a lot of damage, leaving him with literally four archers and two gen and two Lusitani nobles. He still had those uh, swordsmen they got out of there, but all of them were injured. And then finally pulling back as far as we did, made it so the scorpion was obsolete and a lot of the range became obsolete. But, I hope it was educational. I hope you enjoyed a fight of me losing. Uh, I try not to show those because I'm just the best player out there and I should never lose. I'm just kidding. Uh, but I hope you learned something from it. How the balance of power could really screw us over. Uh, or how we can screw ourselves over in multiple occasions. But that is enough for me. I shall be signing off now.